When transporting hazardous materials, which placard is used to indicate flammable liquids? A. Class 2.2 B. Class 4.1 C. Class 3 D. Class 8 Answer, C. Class 3 placards are used to indicate flammable liquids. Class 2.2 indicates non-flammable gases, Class 4.1 indicates flammable solids, and Class 8 indicates corrosive materials. What does the acronym HMR stand for in the context of hazardous materials transportation? A. Hazardous Material Resources B. Hazardous Material Regulations C. Hazardous Material Requirements D. Hazardous Material Receipt Answer, B. HMR stands for Hazardous Material Regulations, which are a set of rules and guidelines for the safe transportation of hazardous materials. Which type of hazard class is characterized by spontaneous or violent reactions with water? A. Class 1 B. Class 2 C. Class 3 D. Class 4.3 Answer, D. Class 4.3 materials are characterized by spontaneous or violent reactions with water. Class 1 materials are explosives, Class 2 materials are gases, and Class 3 materials are flammable liquids. What is the minimum distance a driver must maintain from a burning vehicle carrying hazardous materials? A. 100 feet B. 300 feet C. 500 feet. D. 1000 feet. Answer C. The minimum distance a driver must maintain from a burning vehicle carrying hazardous materials is 500 feet. This distance helps ensure the safety of the driver and prevents them from being affected by toxic fumes, explosions, or other hazards. What type of fire extinguisher must be carried in the cab of a vehicle transporting hazardous materials? A. Type A B. Type B C. Type C D. Type BC Answer, D. Type BC fire extinguishers must be carried in the cab of a vehicle transporting hazardous materials. These extinguishers are suitable for fires involving flammable liquids, type B, and electrical equipment, type C. Who is responsible for packaging, marking, and labeling hazardous materials before transportation? A. The carrier. B. The shipper. C. The driver. D. The receiver. Answer, B. The shipper is responsible for packaging, marking, and labeling hazardous materials before transportation. This ensures that the materials are properly prepared for transport and helps prevent accidents and incidents. Which of the following is not an example of a hazard class communication method? A. Placards B. Labels C. Shipping papers D. Billboards Answer, D. Billboards are not a hazard class communication method. Placards, labels, and shipping papers are all used to communicate information about the hazardous materials being transported. Which of the following hazard classes includes materials that pose a health hazard upon inhalation or contact with skin? A. Class 6.1 B. Class 5.1 C. Class 8 D. Class 9 Answer, A. Class 6.1 includes materials that pose a health hazard upon inhalation or contact with skin. Class 5.1 includes oxidizing substances, Class 8 includes corrosive materials, and Class 9 includes miscellaneous dangerous goods. When are drivers required to stop at a railroad crossing while transporting hazardous materials? A. Always B. 
B. Only when a train is approaching. C. Only when there are flashing red lights. D. Only when carrying explosives. Answer A. Drivers are always required to stop at a railroad crossing while transporting hazardous materials, regardless of whether a train is approaching or not. This safety precaution helps to prevent accidents and incidents involving hazardous materials and trains. What is the proper order of precedence for displaying placards when a vehicle is carrying multiple hazard classes of materials? A. Explosives, flammable gas, flammable solid, corrosive. B. Explosives, poison, flammable liquid, corrosive. C. Explosives, oxidizer, flammable liquid, radioactive. D. Explosives, radioactive, flammable gas, corrosive. Answer B. The proper order of precedence for displaying placards when a vehicle is carrying multiple hazard classes of materials is explosives, poison, flammable liquid, corrosive. This order helps communicate the most significant hazards first. What is the minimum number of placards required to be displayed on a vehicle transporting hazardous materials? A. 1. B. 2. C. 3. D. 4. Answer D. A minimum of four placards is required to be displayed on a vehicle transporting hazardous materials. Placards must be placed on each side and each end of the vehicle to ensure that the hazard class information is visible from all angles. When is it required to use a dangerous placard? A. When carrying more than one hazard class, and the total gross weight is over 2,205 pounds. B. When carrying any amount of class 1.1, 1.2, or 1.3 explosives. C. When a single hazard class is being transported, and the total gross weight is over 1,000 pounds. D. When carrying any amount of class 7 radioactive materials. Answer A. A dangerous placard is required when carrying more than one hazard class, and the total gross weight is over 2,205 pounds. This placard is used to indicate that multiple hazards are present. Which of the following is not a responsibility of the driver when transporting hazardous materials? A. Ensuring the vehicle is properly placarded. B. Verifying the shipper has properly packaged the materials. C. Refusing to transport leaking packages. D. Analyzing the chemical composition of the hazardous materials. Answer D. Analyzing the chemical composition of the hazardous materials is not a responsibility of the driver. The driver's responsibilities include ensuring proper placarding, verifying correct packaging by the shipper, and refusing to transport leaking packages. What is the maximum distance a driver can be from their vehicle when transporting hazardous materials and the vehicle is stopped? A. 25 feet. B. 50 feet. C. 100 feet. D. 200 feet. Answer A. The maximum distance a driver can be from their vehicle when transporting hazardous materials and the vehicle is stopped is 25 feet. This ensures the driver can quickly respond to any incidents or emergencies. Which of the following is not a valid reason for a driver to be disqualified from holding a hazmat endorsement? A. A single DUI conviction. B. A conviction for using a vehicle to commit a felony. C. A conviction for leaving the scene of an accident. D. A history of severe allergies. Answer D. A history of severe allergies is not a valid reason for disqualification from holding a hazmat endorsement. DUI convictions, felony convictions involving a vehicle, and convictions for leaving the scene of an accident are all disqualifying factors. 
What is the minimum tire tread depth required for vehicles transporting hazardous materials? A. 2 by 32 inch. B. 4 by 32 inch. C. 6 by 32 inch. D. 8 by 32 inch. Answer B. The minimum tire tread depth required for vehicles transporting hazardous materials is 4 by 32 inch. This ensures adequate traction and helps maintain control of the vehicle. What document should a driver consult to determine the appropriate response in case of a hazardous materials incident? A. The Emergency Response Guidebook, ERG. B. The Code of Federal Regulations, CFR. C. The Driver's Logbook. D. The Vehicle's Owner's Manual. Answer A. The Emergency Response Guidebook, ERG, should be consulted to determine the appropriate response in case of a hazardous materials incident. The ERG provides guidelines for responding to incidents involving hazardous materials and helps protect the driver, public, and environment. Which hazard class includes materials that may cause injury or harm to health upon limited exposure? A. Class 6.1 Poisonous, Toxic, Materials B. Class 6.2 Infectious Substances C. Class 7 Radioactive Materials D. Class 9 Miscellaneous Dangerous Goods Answer A. Class 6.1 Poisonous, Toxic, materials include substances that may cause injury or harm to health upon limited exposure. Class 6.2 includes infectious substances, Class 7 includes radioactive materials, and Class 9 includes miscellaneous dangerous goods. When must a driver perform a post-trip inspection on a vehicle transporting hazardous materials? A. Only if the vehicle was involved in an accident. B. Only if the driver suspects a mechanical issue. C. At the end of each day's work shift. D. At the end of the trip. Answer. C. A driver must perform a post-trip inspection on a vehicle transporting hazardous materials at the end of each day's work shift. This inspection helps identify any potential issues or hazards and ensures that the vehicle is safe for continued operation. Which hazard class is further divided into compatibility groups A through H, which indicate specific hazards and storage requirements? A. Class 1 Explosives B. Class 2 Gases C. Class 4 Flammable Solids D. Class 5 Oxidizing Substances Answer A. Class 1 explosives is further divided into compatibility groups A through H. These groups indicate specific hazards and storage requirements for each type of explosive material, helping to ensure their safe transportation and handling. When transporting hazardous materials, a driver may encounter a forbidden entry in the hazardous materials table. What does this entry mean? A. The material cannot be transported by any mode of transportation. B. The material is restricted to transport by cargo aircraft only. C. The material must be transported in a closed transport vehicle. D. The material requires a special permit for transportation. Answer A. A forbidden entry in the hazardous materials table means that the material cannot be transported by any mode of transportation. This designation is given to extremely dangerous materials that pose an unacceptable risk to public safety during transportation. When transporting hazardous materials, what is the maximum allowable gross vehicle weight rating, GVWR, for a vehicle to be exempt from stopping at railroad crossings? A. 10,000 pounds. B. 16,000 pounds. C. 26,000 pounds. D. 33,000 pounds. Answer A.
The maximum allowable GVWR for a vehicle to be exempt from stopping at railroad crossings when transporting hazardous materials is 10,000 pounds. Vehicles with a GVWR above this limit must stop at all railroad crossings as a safety precaution. Under which hazard class would a material that reacts violently with water, releasing flammable gases that can ignite or cause an explosion, be classified? A. Class 4.1 Flammable Solids B. Class 4.2 Substances Liable to Spontaneous Combustion C. Class 4.3 Substances Dangerous When Wet D. Class 5.1 Oxidizing Substances Answer, C. A material that reacts violently with water, releasing flammable gases that can ignite or cause an explosion, would be classified under Class 4.3 Substances Dangerous When Wet. This classification helps ensure that the material is handled and transported with the necessary precautions to avoid contact with water. According to 49 CFR Section 172.504, if a transport vehicle contains hazardous materials with different hazard classes requiring different placards, what is the maximum number of placards that must be displayed on each side and each end of the vehicle? A. 2. B. 3. C. 4. D. 5. Answer, C. According to 49 CFR Section 172.504, if a transport vehicle contains hazardous materials with different hazard classes requiring different placards, a maximum of four placards must be displayed on each side and each end of the vehicle. This ensures that the most significant hazards are communicated while still maintaining a clear and manageable display of information. Which of the following materials requires the use of a cargo aircraft only label for transportation? A. Class 1.3 explosives with a projection hazard. B. Class 3 flammable liquids with a flash point above 140 degrees Fahrenheit. C. Class 6.2 Infectious Substances in Risk Group 4 D. Class 8 Corrosive Liquids with a pH of 11 Answer, C. Class 6.2 Infectious Substances in Risk Group 4 require the use of a cargo aircraft-only label for transportation. These materials are considered too dangerous to transport on passenger aircraft and must be shipped using cargo aircraft only. When transporting hazardous materials, what is the minimum required thickness for a vehicle's exhaust system heat shields? A. 0.060 inch B. 0.090 inch C. 0.125 inch D. 0.250 inch Answer, A. The minimum required thickness for a vehicle's exhaust system heat shields when transporting hazardous materials is 0.060 inch. This thickness helps to prevent heat transfer to nearby hazardous materials and reduces the risk of accidents. Which of the following hazard classes is not allowed to be transported through a tunnel with a tunnel restriction code B? A. Class 1 Explosives B. Class 2.1 Flammable Gas C. Class 3 Flammable Liquids D. Class 4.2 Substances Liable to Spontaneous Combustion Answer, A. Class 1 Explosives are not allowed to be transported through a tunnel with a tunnel restriction code B. Tunnel restriction codes help ensure that hazardous materials with certain risks are not transported through confined spaces like tunnels, where incidents can have severe consequences. When a hazardous material is being transported in a cargo tank, what additional information must be included in the shipping paper? A. The specific gravity of the material. B. The type of cargo tank used. C. The emergency response telephone number. D. The tank's maximum filling density. Answer, D. When a hazardous material is being transported in a cargo tank, the shipping paper must include the tank's maximum filling density. 
This information helps ensure that the cargo tank is not overfilled, which could increase the risk of an incident during transport. When loading hazardous materials, what is the maximum distance allowed between the cargo and the vehicle's rear door? A. 3 inches B. 6 inches C. 12 inches D. 18 inches Answer, C. When loading hazardous materials, the maximum distance allowed between the cargo and the vehicle's rear door is 12 inches. This distance helps to prevent the cargo from shifting during transport, which can reduce the risk of an accident. In the event of a hazardous material spill or leak, which of the following should be the driver's first action? A. Attempt to contain the spill or leak. B. Evacuate the area and notify emergency responders. C. Notify the shipper of the material. D. Consult the Emergency Response Guidebook, ERG. Answer, B. In the event of a hazardous material spill or leak, the driver's first action should be to evacuate the area and notify emergency responders. This helps to ensure the safety of the driver and the public, and allows trained professionals to handle the incident appropriately. When transporting hazardous materials, what is the minimum required number of fire extinguishers that must be present in the vehicle? A. 1. B. 2. C. 3. D. 4. Answer, B. When transporting hazardous materials, the minimum required number of fire extinguishers that must be present in the vehicle is 2. Having at least two fire extinguishers ensures that the driver has the necessary resources to respond to a fire involving hazardous materials. What is the maximum net mass allowed for non-bulk packaging containing solid hazardous materials? A. 200 kg, 441 pounds. B. 400 kg, 882 pounds. C. 600 kg, 1,323 pounds. D. 800 kg, 1,764 pounds. Answer, B. The maximum net mass allowed for non-bulk packaging containing solid hazardous materials is 400 kg, 882 pounds. This limit helps to ensure the safe transportation of hazardous materials in smaller containers while maintaining compliance with regulatory requirements. In accordance with 49 CFR Section 172.332, what is the minimum required size for a placard on a transport vehicle carrying hazardous materials? A. 8 inches by 8 inches. B. 9.84 inches by 9.84 inches. C. 12 inches by 12 inches. D. 14 inches by 14 inches. Answer, B. In accordance with 49 CFR section 172.332, the minimum required size for a placard on a transport vehicle carrying hazardous materials is 9.84 inches by 9.84 inches, 250 mm by 250 mm. This size ensures that the placard is easily visible and communicates the hazards of the materials being transported. In the context of hazardous materials transportation, what is the primary purpose of a baffle inside a cargo tank? A. To prevent heat transfer between the tank and its surroundings. B. To prevent the buildup of pressure inside the tank. C. To control the movement of liquid cargo during transport. D. To provide additional structural support for the tank. Answer, C. The primary purpose of a baffle inside a cargo tank is to control the movement of liquid cargo during transport. By restricting the flow of liquid inside the tank, baffles help to prevent the cargo from shifting, which can cause instability and increase the risk of an accident. When transporting hazardous materials, which of the following factors must be considered to ensure the compatibility of different materials in the same cargo area? A. The flash point of each material. B. The pH value of each material. 
C. The water solubility of each material. D. The hazard class or division of each material. Answer, D. When transporting hazardous materials, the hazard class or division of each material must be considered to ensure the compatibility of different materials in the same cargo area. Incompatible materials can react with each other, potentially causing dangerous incidents. The hazard class or division helps categorize materials based on their risks and potential reactions.